Hi everyone, this is Adam, Hello. and that's Jake. Welcome back for another episode of Making Luck, a Dominion podcast. Do not adjust your set or your eye device or whatever you're listening to this podcast on. Yeah, it's it's been over a year, and uh, there's been no episodes, and uh, now there's an episode, and I really hope there's going to be a lot more. So, what happened? Wandering Winder, in case you didn't hear, uh, he decided to stop playing Dominion. Reasons for that are not entirely clear to me. I mean, we've talked about it. Uh, he has his reasons. Uh, I respect those reasons. And uh, as a result, he didn't want to do the podcast anymore. And so the podcast didn't happen for a really long time. And then my IRL friend here, Jake, and I were talking. Yeah, and Adam was... has actual friends. Yeah, it's kind of life. It's kind of cray. It may seem a little jarring to some of you, but, like, I'm not just some internet troll or ghost. Or well, anything. I mean, he is, but also... Yeah, I'm more than just an internet troll, is what I'm trying right. to say. He goes uh, beyond it. <laughs> I'm so... I'm multi-talented, guys. So Jake and I were talking, and it's like, hey, let's try doing this podcast. And, uh, well, I guess here we are, and we're going to talk about Dominion, so I hope you like that. The podcast is going to be a little different. Jake is not Wandering Winder. I am not Wandering Winder. And Adam is not secretly Donald X. These are both things that are true. I mean, I wish sometimes that I was Donald X. And by sometimes, I mean all of the time. I mean, not quite as much as I wish I was Elsa from Frozen, but, like, it's right up there. It's close. Yeah. I mean, it's like I think it's like Elsa, then Tom Hanks, and, and then Donald X? I'm not sure. I haven't really Tom thought Hanks. about this. Yes, Tom Hanks. You want to go? Right. No, no, I'm going to respect your decision on this. Tom Hanks is amazing. I I mean, I liked some of his roles, I guess. The um, Terminal with Tom Hanks is the best movie ever made. Wow. Oh, this... and and T-Swift is up there too because I mean, she's just so brave. Really. So like two of your four are women and there's nothing yeah. wrong with that, but yeah. like that's a big change if you're going to Anyway, so that's a little off topic. I mean, I, I don't, I don't see what, <laughs> I don't see what the big deal is. Like, no, I mean there isn't a big deal. I accept you for who you are. El yeah. Elsa is is like an animated character. Like that's that's a pretty big change, more significant than <laughs> being a woman. I don't see what the why. Why does everything have to be about sex and or gender with you? Oh, I just well, said the s word. We might get the explicit tag on this podcast. Sorry. sorry. Ah, damn. Well, <laughs> I guess there's only, it's only going up from here. We've hit rock bottom, and now it's time to start our ascent. Yeah, it's going to be so good. Yeah. Uh, so so anyway, uh, the, the general for format of this podcast is not going to change all that much. We're still going to be using the podcast sandwich methodology. So, uh, you know, at the beginning of every episode, we're going to talk about the kingdom that we addressed at the end of last episode, except for, for this episode, because I don't see much point in talking about a kingdom from a year and a half ago that Jake wasn't on the episode for, because uh, <laughs> I forgot about it. Sorry. So uh, we're just going to talk about, you know, what we have been for now. And then uh, at the end, you know, that's that's the other piece of bread to our podcast sandwich. We'll introduce a new kingdom that we'll we'll discuss, and then uh, we'll we'll gather feedback from from you, the listeners, and we'll play a couple of games ourselves, and then you know we'll report on that at the uh, the beginning of the next episode. And on the different games I win of those that we play, Adam and I, we're going to talk about how I won specifically and which strategies I've employed to win and why they were so effective. Yeah, I, I feel like those are going to be worth talking about because that's pretty much never going to happen, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll take that as a yes. So anyway, uh, and, and then the middle, uh, the meat portion of our podcast sandwich, which uh, will sometimes be Virginia brand ham, but uh, I don't know, we might mix it up a little bit. I'm sorry, Wandering Winder, it's not personal. It's just that... I would feel it just wouldn't feel right, you know, having Virginia Brain Ham here without you. So Is that your guys' thing, all right? Yeah, it was. I mean, it was it was his thing that I agreed with. It, it is a all superior right. lunch meat. Is but it? But we're, we're yeah. I defer to your authority on this. Great uh, argument from authority wins again. Really glad to hear that. So uh, during the meat portion of our Dominion podcast, we'll have uh, whatever the main topic is for our episode. 
And uh, we'll, we'll deal with that, and we'll have lots of delicious podcast sandwiches. Um, do, you, do you have any? Do you have any words for our esteemed listeners, Jake? Uh, no, just that I look forward to talking about Dominion and Dominion strategy, and we look forward to talking about individual cards as well as concepts, and as well at how. Rats is the most overpowered card, and most of the episodes are going to be centered around how these different cards interact with rats, obviously, because that's just Dominion. Like, you're taking it out of context if you're not talking about rats, but um, maybe we'll get outside of that as well. I mean, if, just for the edge casey stuff, right? Yeah. The edge like, cases were, yeah. Obviously, Bridge and Rats, like, it's hard to Oh, man, that's. Too. That's. Um, bridge and Rats together is just ridiculous. Yeah, you get both of them, and you can you can know. trash bridge to rats. I mean, hello. Yes, and of course, at a certain point, you have trashed all the bridges to rats. Yeah, because your deck is full of rats, and yeah, it's great. It's yeah, it's probably the best thing possible. So, uh, so anyway, one one last thing I wanted to add before we get into the meat portion of our podcast sandwich is. You know, the, the usual avenues for responding, giving feedback on the podcast are valid. You know, this will be posted on YouTube, iTunes. However, uh, there's going to be a forum for this podcast. Uh, it's on my blog. So if you just go to adamhorton.com, uh, you can find my blog there. It's called Wake Up Meeples. Uh, you, can, you can go there. There's links to the forum, and there's uh, areas in the forum where you can talk about published episodes. Uh, you can give us your ideas for topics that you think we should do episodes on or partial episodes on if it's not that detailed. And you can interact with us, uh, give us your thoughts about whatever kingdoms we discuss, or if you think we are amazing, you can go ahead and tell us that as well. Or if you think yeah. we're not amazing, I guess you could tell us that too. Sure, it's fine. Or if you just think I'm amazing, feel free to tell us that. Yeah. But, um, oh, the other thing, of course, if you, you may come across us on other you know, forums as well, like the Dominion Online Client or the Strategy Wiki, etc. Um, Adam, it's going to be obvious when you see him, his name is Adam Horton everywhere. Mine is screw you, Y-I-O-U-X. So if you want to talk about, if you come across us in a game or online and you want to talk about anything related to the podcast there, give us ideas or feedback, feel free. And that's how you'll find us. Sweet. All right. Uh, so, so, um, when I go to Jungle Gyms, Jake, and uh, I go to their deli, which, by the way, uh, after going to that deli, I hope I never have to go to another deli the rest of my life. They they give you a little sample of the lunch meat that you're ordering, and uh, it's delicious. And and oh. so after I've gone there and I get my lunch meat for the week and I bring it home, and then and then that first time that I'm ready to make a sandwich with that lunch meat comes my favorite part of enjoying whatever lunch meat I'm partaking in. In this particular case, we'll go with Virginia brand ham. Hebra. You know what the hardest... Okay, go ahead. (laughs) I was just going to say my favorite part of that experience is just taking that container of lunch meat and opening it. Wow. That's deep. And I guess that this is where we talk about openers because you're opening... A container of lunch mate. And mm. as a quick aside, you know what the most challenging part of this podcast I feel is going to be? <laughs> is coming up with new and interesting ways to talk about lunch mate for your sandwich metaphor every <laughs> single week. Challenge <laughs> like, accepted. Man, I mean, I've seen you come into some really weird turns with this. So I look forward to that. But openers. Yeah, they're so important like, uh, for lunch meat, and they're important for dominions. So, why are they important? Uh, well, I mean, it's early turns in dominion are, are probably the more important turns in the whole game because their effect has uh, a lot of times a snowball effect where if you gain an advantage in the first early turns in the game, you can compound that into a larger advantage by using that to have better cards in your deck, and those better cards allow you to have better turns, and the better turns gives you better cards, and, and mm-hmm. so the opening is kind of where that all begins. The first and, two turns of the game are, I think are the most important turns in any game of Dominion. 
And just for terminology's sake, that's what we're calling the opener, right? Is those first two turns. Yeah, I mean, I, I think most of the time that coincides with the first time you shuffle your deck after buying cards. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't think trying to distinguish between there is, is a huge deal. I mean, every sure. once in a while you're going to shuffle at some other weird time. But, like... That's that's the idea. Like, what what cards are you putting in your deck before you shuffle? And almost all the time, that's two cards. So that's how we're going to talk about it because that makes our lives easier. It does. Yeah. So like those those two turns are really important, right? I mean, the cards you buy there, you're going to have in your deck for the longest amount of time because screw coppers and estates, we want them gone, right? Also, the other thing that's very significant about them is that they're arguably the two turns that a lot of the time you have the most control over, right? Like, or at least they're the most predictable two turns because you've got these 10 cards in your deck, you see five of them, and then you see the other five. You know 100% of the sequencing of those cards. Yeah, so like... It, like, if I you mean, see five coppers, you know you're seeing two coppers in the next turn. If you see three coppers in one hand, you know you're going to see three, four in the next turn. So you'll talk about a 5-2 or a 3-4 in that respect. Right. So... You know, obviously you should plan those two buys together if you're not doing so, in almost all cases. Mm-hmm. And you have the luxury of doing that. Yeah, almost all the time. So, like, this this is the case where it's easiest to track your deck in Dominion, and, and yeah, you, you get a lot of the benefit from doing that. So you have these two buys that you, that you have, and you want to plan them together, and... You know, it's really easy to just look at, you know, 17 options and I have no idea what I want because they all look like, what What do I do, right? Um, so I, I, this episode is going to be about focusing on what guides your decisions in, in those turns of the game. So, like, what, what do you do, Jake? What, what guides your decisions? So my first priority is putting a card into my deck that is going to give me control over my deck for subsequent turns. Um, usually that's in the form of a trasher or a, a card that trashes other cards and gets them out of my deck. Um, but sometimes that'll be in the form of something that draws cards and discards them, like a, a we call it a sifter. Um, but uh, the other thing I want to think about is payloads. So, um, you know, putting a silver into my deck is usually one of those first two turns. Okay, so yeah, when when people are beginning to play Dominion, a rule of thumb I give them for the the first maybe five games they play is if you have a three four, usually you want to spend your three on a silver. That's good in a lot of cases, and you know it's not good in a lot of cases as well. But it's a decent starting point to get them to understand like the value of hitting five, and I think hitting five is one of the more important things that you think about in your opening because you have this opposition like there are these five dollar cards that i want to buy and I'm, you're probably not hitting five in the opening right so so how do you make it so you can hit five as much as possible or as early as possible so you can get these great cards into your deck and how do you weigh that against other options for cards that you could buy in the opening yeah absolutely um and of course some five cost cards are more important than others when you see them yeah so that's our podcast. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, the, I mean, yep. there's there's a lot of nuance here. So, like, you you mentioned deck control, and and yes, that's that's the most important thing that I'm thinking about during the opening, getting control over your deck. So so there's this analogy that I've used a lot. The game game of Dominion takes place in three big phases, right? If I look from really far away, and I'm I'm really abstracting a lot of it away. A game of Dominion is is a game where first you get control over your deck, second you make your deck do good stuff, and then third you win the game with your deck. That's what it looks like from a really long way away, and and they're in that order because the things that are important to you in the beginning of the game are deck control related, and then the things that are important after that are making your deck good good stuff, which some people refer to as payload. And then at the end, you're just trying to figure out how to take this deck you have and win the game with it. So that's more of an end gameplay type of thing. And a lot of newer players, the main mistake that they'll make, or and even more experienced players as well, the thing that really ups your Dominion game is understanding 
that you need to have the discipline to adhere to that order is that the first thing that is important is getting control. And the second thing that's important is getting good stuff to happen when you play your cards. And the third thing, of course, is winning the game. But people will do steps one and two out of order a lot, and it's a mistake. Yeah, the the biggest example is I open with a trasher, and once my opponent sees, oh, wow, that's doing good things for Adam, then they get a trasher. And like, yeah, that's fine. It's going to help them, but it helps you a lot early. It helps you a lot more if you can do that earlier. And so the deck control part of things is something you do early because that's when it benefits you the most. And part of the reason that you want to think about trashing early, benefiting you so much, is that remember that before you shuffle your deck and see these cards that you've bought, you have to draw every card that's in your deck in most cases. So if you trash an estate, you kind of every shuffle get to draw the estate for free in a way. Right. Before you, you see the other cards that you bought. It's actually, I mean, you can view it as even better than that. Like, you never have to draw the estate. So, like, when yeah. you're counting on some card to make your turn better, you're never going to have that chance of it being that estate because that estate sucks and will ruin your day. You don't even have to worry about it. Like, trashing, trashing is better than drawing early on because of that, right? It's, mm-hmm. it's way better to not have to deal with the card at all than to have to go through the trouble of drawing it. But, I mean, that's a sort of minor... Thing. Sure. Yeah. And so, <laughs> yeah. So, w- and we've talked about control over your deck and getting it in as importance for your opener. What does that mean? Um, what? How would you define control in the context of what cards you're opening with? So, if I'm going to look at the things that are important to me in the very beginning of the game, because that's where we've uh, we've scoped this. The, f- the most important thing for me to do early is thinning and junking. And I'm lumping these two together because if you junk your opponent, it kind of has the opposite effect as thinning for them. And, you know, if, you, if they junk you, it's the opposite effect as thinning. So, like, the two of these are sort of equal importance, right? Junking, of course, being putting cards into your opponent's deck that they didn't want. Yeah. And, and thinning is getting the bad cards out for you. So you're trying to gain control over just which cards are in your deck. So right. so thinning and junking have sort of an equal priority here. You know, if you can do both, sometimes you're going to want to do thinning first, sometimes you're going to want to do junking first. It depends on a lot of things. And if you're going to ask me which one to do first, it's not a simple answer. It's no. complex to, to know the factors that go into that. And frankly, I think it's beyond the scope of this podcast. Uh <laughs> It's beyond the scope of most people's play, could, frankly, but... We could have a whole episode on like, just that, right? Yeah, right. But, but like, they're, they're, of the simil- they're of similar importance, and that similar importance is more important than anything else you can be doing on turns one and two of a game of Dominion. So if you can junk your opponent, your opening buys should be devoted to junking your opponent as quickly as possible. So you see something on the board like Marauder, that a lot of the time is what you're going to spend your $4 on of your 7 that you start with because it's putting bad cards into your opponent's deck. Right. If junking is something I've decided I want to do, I'm probably going to open with it or or something that helps me do it. So so here's a distinction. Um, Let's say the junker or the thinner, let's say that card costs 5 and I didn't open with 5. So I need to buy a card that helps me hit five, right? And so buying a card that helps me hit five in this case, because that junker or that thinner costs five, that's on the same level of importance. So usually that card is silver, but, you know, there are other cards out there that are real good at hitting five, like Horse Traders or Mill or, you know, Rip and Peace Feast. We'll always remember you. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, uh, Feast doesn't exist anymore in a lot of people's minds. But e- the other thing, of course, are a- terminal equivalent silvers like Monument or Nomad Camp. Sure. Uh, let, me, let me add a caveat there, though, because if you, if you get two terminal silvers... Um, yeah, that's, that's not helping you hit five. Well, I mean, it does... But it's not as good as a terminal silver and then a silver, right? Because there's the chance that they collide. 
So okay. let's say I draw the two of those with uh, two other coppers and an estate. If they were both terminal silvers, I'm not hitting five. But if one of them was just a silver or like something that isn't terminal and still gives me the money, then I'm still hitting five there. So since my objective was to hit five so I can thin or junk, um, you, you know, you, you have to keep in mind your buys are going to be aimed to maximize your chances of hitting five. And that means that two terminals is less good than a terminal and an also silver in this case. And the other thing to keep in mind that will help you understand why a lot of cards are usually not the best idea to open is the value is under is keeping in mind the value of hitting five and how good silver is at helping you do that. Because somebody might ask you, well, what's wrong with opening with a village? You know, it draws a card. It gives you two actions. It's not hurting it's, you. It's deck control, it's like, man. Yeah, I know. You drew a card. No, but you really didn't because, <laughs> I mean, you, you did technically do it, yes, but that three could have been silver, and then that could have helped you hit five, which could have helped you get something else that's moving you along on this three-step process that we've talked about to a winning strategy of Dominion. So, yeah, so, like, I'm not going to tell you that you should never open with a village, so, uh, sure, I mean, there are exceptions, but, but you shouldn't open with a village, right? <laughs> and, and if someone wanted to open with a village, uh, here's, here's, what I, here's what I tell them. So, like, focus strategies in Dominion, they win more. Yeah. So, like, you want to you wanna be very focused. You want to have a goal. And, and right now, this discussion has gotten you to the goal of, I want to thin my deck, or I want to junk my opponent, or I want to do both of them. And, and now I've decided... You know, I could just buy that card straight away, or a lot of times I need to hit five. So now my focus is still just as resolute, but now my focus is on hitting five. Yeah, and that's not to say that we're only talking about village here, too. There are a lot of cards that people don't understand are not the best opener because they're not silver. Anything that costs, you know, three or four that isn't helping you to get that step one deck control under your belt could have just been a silver yeah so like if, if your goal if you've decided your goal now is to hit five like you you have to you have to maximize your chances of that with that same kind of focus so like getting one or two silvers in the opening that's the most important thing and so a, a lot of times it's it's easy enough to just think through like okay what if what if i draw this card how am i going to hit five with it and if, if the answer is I'm going to get really lucky and draw a bunch of other cards that help me hit five in spite of the <laughs> fact that I drew this card, then right. maybe you should reconsider. <laughs> like, Yeah, if you're ever thinking through any phase of your strategy <laughs> and the phrase, okay, I need to get really lucky and, okay, you're, you're on the wrong track. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Dominion has luck in it, but there are so many ways to get around luck. It's like kind of why the own. name of... Yeah, that's kind of the name of this podcast. We went full circle. Making luck. A Dominion podcast. All right. Hashtag man. full did, circle. Did we sneak some bread into the middle of this? It's okay. Some meat of the, okay. Yeah, I mean, I've had sandwiches before that have had a piece of bread in the middle. Or like maybe some fine. like crispy onion straws to add like a little bit of texture. Sure. I mean, they have breading on yeah. them. So, yeah. Yeah, breading. Breading. Yeah. It's breading. That's what we're doing. It's breading. It's breading on the crispy onion straws in the middle of our Dominion podcast sandwich. Yes. Yeah. We should do so anyway. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> so. You know, I. That's that's actually not a bad idea. And, and yeah, you know, I just a recipe at the end of each episode. Maybe I should do these podcasts while hungry. Like, I, yeah. I just ate dinner before this podcast, so this wasn't planned very well. But tune in next time on Making Luck, a Dominion podcast. We'll be hungry for Dominion. <laughs> also food. So, <laughs> yeah, so, right, so, so thinning and junking, so that's the most yeah. important thing. And that's related to deck control. So, like, there's, there's another thing that I think is important enough that a lot of times you consider in any opening... And it's, it's actually not deck control related, but it is the second thing in terms of what are your priorities early in the game. So, so let's say you, you know, I'm, I have one of my buys committed to thinning and junking, and it's getting the job done. Or maybe you can't do that on this board. 
Maybe maybe it's not possible. So like I buy my chapel and I have a buy left over, or there's no thinning and junking on the board. What do I do with my opening? What's what's the next most important thing if I've already taken care of that first thing? And that's gainers. Yeah. Something that helps you gain more cards. So I'm looking at Workshop and all of its cousins, right? Right, Workshop and and any gainer that trashes something and then gains you something else is doing it's both of those hot. drops like remake yeah that's, that's pretty hot like it's uh, hot yeah this this virginia brand ham is sizzling right now mm. we, we can put some melting cheese on it it'll go great with our onion straws are you sure you're not hungry adam no okay <laughs> So, so gainers, I mean, the reason gainers are so good early is because it takes a little bit of time for them to pay for themselves in terms of the investment you put in them. It's yeah. like the first time you see that gainer, it, it's less good than the card you wanted to gain instead because sure. it's not doing anything for that current hand. And then the next time yeah, you see you it, spend... yeah. Well, I was just going to reiterate what you said. To, it's not as good to see a gainer the first time you open with two coppers two estates and a workshop you spent three on the workshop that could have been a serve silver you could have hit four and instead you hit two but then you play the workshop to gain a silver and that helps future hands sure yeah and then like the second time you play it it's still kind of okay and it takes a few times for you to see that workshop for it to really pay for itself and so it stands to reason that if that card's going to be good you want to get it as early as possible to get the maximum <laughs> benefit out of it so, so these gainers can really accelerate how fast you build your deck. Uh, and so they're pretty important. They're more important than anything else in the game other than thinning and junking. So, so in terms of the opening, these are the top two things that are important to me when I'm considering what are my goals. And, you know, once I've decided what my goals are, I think about how I'm going to reach those goals and then craft my buys so that I can reach those goals. Yeah. <laughs> And yes, and this is assuming, of course, that uh, we have thinning and junking, which is the most important means of achieving debt control. But there's another kind of debt control, too, yeah. that is not thinning or junking. And it's a little more subtle and harder to see sometimes. But if you're drawing through a bunch of cards, even if you're discarding them after, if you're seeing a bunch of cards in your deck, you're still controlling the cards that are in your hand at any given time. Something that comes to mind is Dungeon. And a lot of the time, this isn't going to be optimal for an opener. But if you really need to get control of your deck, something that is drawing cards and discarding them for you is is sometimes an acceptable replacement for thinning or junking. So, yeah, I mean, it's it can be a less good version of, of thinning in this case. Um, I, because I think control, it's kind of... Well, right, right. It is, it is deck control. Control, is, control isn't about necessarily having the cards out of your deck. It's Although that's the best and most direct way to do it, it's about controlling the cards that you're drawing at any given time. That's true. And so it's kind of like... It's kind of like a less good version, a great value brand, trademark, substitute for, <laughs> for that. Uh, you can also Very view it in too. the lens of like, well, this is, this is helping me put good cards in my hand. Like it's mm -hmm. helping me draw the good cards that I want. So, you know, in my mind, draw is a step below gainers. Like that would be yeah. the next most important thing if I'm taking care of thinning, junking, and gaining already, or I can't do some of that and I have to skip it. Like, yeah, draw would be the next most important thing, but but I think that is a tier below gainers. Definitely. Gainers and trashers and thinners and junkers are much better at that. But a game, of course, comes to mind. You and I were playing, and I was complaining about not being able to get control of my deck. And then you pointed out that you had four hirelings in front of you. <laughs> and you and I said, there's no way to get control. And you said, well, I'm drawing nine cards at the start of my turn, so I do have control. <laughs> you don't have control. <laughs> so um, so right. that's there are two kinds of control. Yeah. So, so with when you go for something that's good at cycling, like like the dungeon, like you'd mentioned, you have to be really careful though, because mm -hmm. there's there's another metric I like to use when I'm thinking about my buys, and I think about what what are these cards going to do for me on the next two turns of the game, turn three and turn four. 
and and my goal here is to put better cards in my deck when I do a shuffle after that. So if if I'm gonna buy a card that cycles me, like I, Warehouse is a simpler example, so I'll use that. But the same principle applies for Dungeon. Let's say I draw that Warehouse on turn four. What's that Warehouse gonna do for me? I'm gonna play it. And I'm going to improve the quality of this hand, but I'm going to cause a shuffle on turn four. And whatever card I buy with this great improved hand that the warehouse gave me, I'm not going to shuffle in until later. That's true. So, like, I I have this issue, and a lot of the cycling cards and the orange cards and the brown cards, like, they a lot of them have this problem that, yeah, they're great if you're going to draw them on turn three, but... That's not very likely. That's a less than 40% chance of happening. And so you mentioned earlier, like, if your strategy involves getting lucky, and in this case, getting lucky is drawing that card on turn three, or else it's not really that great for you, then then you should really consider if you can do better. Sometimes you can't, right? Sometimes cycling is what you really want and you need to get mm-hmm. it early and often. But, and, and like, you just hope to draw yeah, it on turn three the, and get lucky. The turn two rat catcher is sometimes something you do in spite of yourself. That's right. So so a lot of the times I find that opening with these cards isn't worth it. And and the big exception to that is the ones that trash. Ratcatcher, Amulet, Transmogrify. And right. you know, there's there may be a couple of others, but like thinning is just so important that, you know, if that's the best way to do it, go for it. But you know, those aren't really good at the job because they're orange and tan and they have that problem of they're really only good if you draw them on turn three. Sometimes they're not even good then. Like, Dungeon, if I draw that on turn three, I'm still causing that shuffle on turn four. Yeah. So, like, my amazing turn has to happen on turn three, which requires even more luck. So you're taking that less than 40%, and you're making it even smaller. And if I'm going to make luck a Dominion podcast, then I want to I want my numbers to be higher than 55 and we're nowhere right. near there at this point. So, uh, that's that's my other metric. What are these cards doing for me on turn three and turn four? Uh, I I believe that actually hits. Oh, there's there's one more thing I wanted to mention. Um, so when you're thinking about hitting five, um, remember how we we saw junking as sort of like the the counterpart to thinning because it had the opposite effect for your opponent. Um, you want to hit. You want to think about cards that hit your opponent in that similar way when you're wanting to hit five. So yeah. opening militia and denying your opponent a five dollar hand or cut purse or something like that. Because um, if if your opponent is prioritizing hitting five as much as you are, it's going to be really hard for them to do that with a three card hand. Right. So like when I'm first player. I have a 10 out of 12 chance of drawing that attack and hitting them with that attack on a turn that's going to make them suffer. So, like, as first player, you really have to give strong consideration to that. If, if you decided hitting five is a goal, hurting your <clears throat> opponent from hitting five is on that same level of importance. If you're second player, you know, maybe you're going to do it anyway, but, you know, now you have to draw the card on turn three and... You know, it's, it's not, not something you don't do per se because it is very strong, but it is something that's slightly weaker because you're second player. Yeah, that's that's life in Dominion, man. You're second player that's, and your life is yeah. harder. Yeah, especially life. Yeah. Um, now, we have also kind of been assuming throughout this discussion that both players are starting with a $3 hand and a $4 hand in their first two turns because that's the most likely situation. But there's another possibility, which is that you get 5-2 or 2-5. Snap. Snap. Now, if you're... A lot of the time you're focused on hitting 5 in those first two turns and you see your opponent, they open with 5 and they just get the card that you have been working toward getting and it feels like the end of the world. (laughs) <laughs> but it's not. So, Adam, why is that not the end of the world? Uh, well, I mean, first of all, it's it's just a card game, man. Like, <laughs> <laughs> not what I was getting at, but if, yes. <laughs> if if like this is really the end of the world for you, like, please get help. It's not worth it. Like, there are, there phones, are people that care about you. I care about you. Like, you're listening to this podcast. I care. Like, just. Send me an email or something. Like we can talk. I I will hug you. Like it's fine. He'll 
do it too, and it won't matter if you don't want him to hug you. <laughs> it's gonna happen. <laughs> You're going to have another human being touching you, and you're going to be like, ugh. <laughs> All right. So, so like, seriously. And, and what it comes down to is, of course, you know, having the cards that you want to have and, and when you get them. So your opponent, of course, by getting it in their opening hands, might get it a turn earlier. But if it misses the shuffle for them and you get it on turn three because you opened with silvers, you've kind of evened out. So you you see something like Soothsayer, which is a junking attack that costs five and it's a priority, and your opponent opens with it. It feels like the end of the world. Oh like, my, don't... get help, Jake. It's okay. <laughs> I know, I know. But don't despair. Buy the silver and, you know, bite your bite your lower lip and buy the silver and then hope that you can get the soothsayer turn three. Your opponent maybe doesn't see it until turn five. And then there's a possibility you get yours on turn five and then you're you're back in the game and you've evened out that way. I, I just want to clarify that making luck a Dominion podcast does not condone self-mutilation. So when you're biting your lower lip, please be gentle. <laughs> Okay. Kind of gentle. Yeah. The the way the way I see it, like it's the severity of the situation too. <laughs> of course, I mean, I guess if if someone's gonna shoot you if you don't win this game of Dominion, okay, that is beyond the scope of this podcast. So <laughs> maybe a bit. So so when in my in my IRL games, if people get a five two and they're like, hey, do you, do you want me to redeal this? Like I I never I never take them up on that because first of all. You know, it's not necessarily an advantage to open five two, depending on the board. And then when it is, when it is an advantage, like sometimes, like Jake said, they, they're not even going to see their card till turn five. Like there's a lot of other sources of luck in the game that could even things out. So like, you know, let the game play out. It's it's definitely not over. Bad draws can happen to anyone, and and you know they could kind of cancel out the effect of the good draw that they had. But also, like. Life's not fair, man. <laughs> and and like I'm kind of a Johnny. So if I see that I'm a, a Johnny is someone who likes to win in a spectacular way. He doesn't care as much about the quantity of his wins, but more about the quality <laughs> of his wins. All right, fair. Have you heard of Tammy Johnny and Spike? No, what? Oh, there's a wonderful article. It's it's in the context of Magic the Gathering. Uh, yeah, let's go on this tangent. So Spike is a guy who only cares about the number of games he wins. He doesn't care how he wins them. He'll play whatever deck he needs to that's, like, lame as long as it's OP and lets him win games. And Johnny, he doesn't care. He's, like, the combo player. He just wants to win in a spectacular way. If he wins one game in 100 and it was the most epic win, he's ecstatic. And then okay. uh, Timmy, I forget what he does, but he's he's not Spike. So <laughs> Okay. It's a great article. I'd highly recommend it. But but anyway, like I, I like being able to say that, you know, I had this disadvantage and I was able to persevere and come back. Because if I win, then I have this great feeling. But even if I lose, I can just blame the 5-2. <laughs> and, and my I, ego is intact. It's and great. it's even better if he didn't go first. Because if he loses and he didn't go first, believe me, it's because he didn't go first. <laughs> That's right. I mean... <laughs> I, I gotta tell you, like, there's you can't lose if you have a disadvantage to start off with. That's true. There's <laughs> you no can't way to go. Lose. Up. That's right. But yeah, and also just kind of, I mean, there are the boards. There, there's the odd board where somebody opens with a five-two, and it actually just hamstrings you, and you can't come back, and you never had a shot. Those, I'm, I'd be lying to you if I said those never happened. But I'm looking at you, they Abe. are. So well, they are so much more rare than people give them credit for. A lot of the times when you open with a 5-2 and you buy that mountebank or you buy that chapel and whatever five you want, people will tilt. People will get – people will like lose focus on the game and just focus on how much they wish they had your opener. And then they'll start playing worse. And if you weren't going to win before, you definitely are now. Yeah, don't, don't, don't play worse. That's yeah. good for winning. Keep your keep your head in the game, even if you don't get the opener you want. Yeah, man. Oh, I'm serious. Like it's that's I, that's, I'm, probably, I'm, that's gonna impact your win rate almost as much as better strategy is. You know your mindset and keeping your head in the game. Yeah, Dominion is not a political game. 
But you can play that mind game. Until you make it one. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All right. Uh, did, did you have anything else to say about our uh, delicious, meaty portion of our podcast sandwich until there we move is on one, to the... Yes? Yes, there, there is one thing, and I have saved it toward the end because it's kind of an edge case, but it's a very significant one because it, it subverts a lot of what we've said before. Okay. We've talked about... Well, yeah, and we've talked about the importance of the order of, what you, of your priorities in Dominion. You... A, get control of your deck through thinning and junking, and then B, you put good stuff in your deck, and then C, you win the game. There's one card that you'll see that puts things in a different order. Oh, and does it is, begin with the letter D? It does. And does it, it end with Onate? It ends with Onate, and that's Donate. <laughs> oh, so, nice. Adam, Adam, tell me about Donate. Uh, it's it's real good. It's real good. <laughs> Uh, it's real good. It kind of kind of changes a, things. It changes a lot of things. Yeah, like uh, the, the way you build so a deck with donate is donate. different. Yeah. Yeah. Go, the, go ahead. The uh, whole read, game. read that text, man. Sure. Well, the whole game around donate is going to be different. So donate is an event, and you know I'll leave it to you to figure out exactly what an event is if you don't already know. But it's an event that costs zero money, so you can buy it at any time. And you do take on eight debt, but that's not really what's important. But what you do after you buy the donate is you take your entire deck and your discard pile into your hand, no matter how many cards that is. You trash any number of them, and you shuffle your hand into your deck and draw five cards. So essentially, you pick up this whole deck that you have, whatever it is and then you get rid of any cards you don't want from it and then you put your deck back and that's now what you have so you do things in a different order because the debt control is something that you can acquire at any time for z without hitting a price point and you can have as much of it as you want so instead of putting good things in your deck second you put good things in your deck first and as quickly as possible yeah. so you'll see people opening silver silver or workshop silver a lot of the time just to get that payload in there understanding they can get the control later yeah and like donate openings are are real real complicated like that could be a whole episode by itself is just talking about sure. donate and it's uh there's a lot going on when uh, when donates around so it's going to be very different and that different thing starts like at the opening so yeah and like we said it's an edge case but it's a significant one and you'll see it yeah all right uh anything else uh before we go into this uh little example portion we got here uh no i think we've covered everything i can think of as far as broad opener concepts goes cool so uh so what we'll do is since we've talked about a lot of theory here uh what i thought we'd do is just look at some kingdoms and uh, talk about what we would open and why on a particular board so you can see what this looks like in practice, yeah? So, Definitely. Uh, if, you're a, if you are a video listener, you're now going to be seeing uh, some screenshots or maybe some video of just, just like loading up some random boards and uh, talking through them. Uh, but we will be reading the cards out loud uh, for our audio-only listeners. So I'll do this one, and then uh, we, okay. can, we can switch these. So this kingdom sure. consists of... Menagerie, Procession, Salvager, Temple, Contraband, Crypt, Haunted Woods, Lost City, Tactician, Bank, and there's Pilgrimage and Windfall. I'll read that one more time. Menagerie, Procession, Salvager, Temple, Contraband, Crypt, Haunted Woods, Lost City, Tactician, Bank, and there's Pilgrimage and Windfall. Mm-hmm. So, uh, what would you open here? I would be thinking about it for a minute between Salvager and Temple. I mean, my three would be a silver, uh, because I don't see any compelling reason not to buy a silver. But, the and actually, that's something I wanted to ask you your thoughts on. So, Salvager is a card that trashes and gives you a benefit after trashing. Yeah. Um, which, uh, you know beyond the points it gives you money which is a benefit toward building your deck 
Temple, on the other hand, has the potential to trash more cards and do it a little bit faster. So I would lean toward opening Temple here, Temple Silver. What would you, would you maybe open Salvager Silver? Uh, no, I wouldn't. And the reason for that is, like you said, in the beginning of the game, uh, thinning lots of cards is usually better than thinning not a lot of cards, right? Right. The the fact Regardless that Salvager, of the other benefits. yeah, the fact that Salvager can give you money that helps your current turn. I mean, really, the turn, the success of that turn is going to be amplified if, if you're able to trash more than one card on that turn. So that victory point token, I don't really care about that till the end of the game. Sure. But the fact that Temple can trash more than one card, I'm in, bro. So yeah, I'm definitely opening Temple and like, I mean, what are my options for a three? I'm not going to open Menagerie. I start the game with seven coppers. That that Menagerie yeah, does nothing for me on turn three or turn four. So I'm going to open a silver because that's really the best of all the options. You're going to need some silver in this deck. You're going to need to draw a lot of cards with Haunted Woods and Lost City. Eventually, you'll probably pick up Salvager for plus buy, but uh, I'm certainly not going to open with it. Okay. Sounds I, good to me. Yeah, I don't, uh, I don't have much else to say about the yeah, opening Yeah, so I think we both one. agree that... Yeah, I don't. I think that we both agree that Temple Silver is the preferred opening. Um, if somebody opened Salvager Silver, though, I wouldn't call them crazy. Um, I would understand why they did what they did. Yeah, I, or I still what, like good. you lean toward the Temple. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what would you get on five two? Oh, on a five two. So, I would with my two be sad and not buy anything. Me too. With my f yeah, with my five. Oh man, so. I think it's an easy call for me. It's not a fun Haunted, call. Haunted Woods. Oh, really? Yeah, uh, I'm not going to buy a Lost City that early. I'm I'm buying a Temple 100% of the time. This is not close oh. for me. Oh, so you're you're just getting the Temple even though it's yeah. uh, it's not. Yeah. The, well, yeah, yeah. The Haunted Woods, I think, is really bad to open with. Really? I, okay. I, I really think that's a big mistake because, um, first of all, it's orange. So like, what is that card gonna do for you on turn three or turn four? If you if you draw it on turn four, it does nothing for you. So uh, yeah, like, you're right. That's that's no bueno. If you draw it on turn three though, um, it, like, what's it gonna do? It does nothing on turn three, and yeah, it improves your turn four, but it causes that shuffle. So like, your improved hand is not gonna shuffle a card in your deck, and now your turn five is gonna suck, right? So, I I mean, that's I, true. I think Haunted Woods is definitely a mistake. Yeah, and I guess that's coming into the sunk cost bias a lot of people have when they hit price points higher than actually what they wanted, thinking they have to spend all their money. Yeah. So, okay, what are you um, continuing the sunk cost bias? What do you think about Crypt? I mean, I'm not going to open with Crypt. Is, Crypt is a card that's good after you have draw in your deck. It's orange, man. Like, if it's orange, you pretty <laughs> much never open with it, like, unless it trashes or is Fishing Village. I think that's it. Okay. <laughs> All right, so, I mean, we've both agreed that we want a Temple in the opener. Um, I would probably lean toward Temple after this conversation, and, yeah, yeah. but, okay. All right, next one. So. Okay, uh, so this time we have Encampment with Plunder, Monastery, Catapult, Bard, Remake, uh, Rocks to go with Catapult, sorry about that, uh, Walled Village, Archive, Bandit Camp, Bizarre, replace, and we also have plan and trade. Once again, for our audio-only listeners, encampment with plunder, monastery, catapult with rocks, bard, remake, walled village, archive, bandit camp, bizarre, replace. And there's also plan and trade. Okay, so on a 3-4 here, I am hard pressed to see how anything is better than silver remake i know there are some really appealing options here but remake is so amazing at getting control of your deck and putting good stuff into your deck at the same time that i will almost never not open with it if i have the option to remake is probably the best four dollar card in terms of opening in general quality. I, I really like opening with a remake here. I think getting Monastery is probably better than Silver. You'd go remake Monastery, huh? I think I would. Well, okay, so Monastery does have the... It, it's not in action, so it's not going to collide with remake and be a problem, but... It's, it's actually best when it collides with remake. You can trash uh, another card. Yeah. I don't know, though, because, like, 
Yeah, at a certain point, you don't need to trash anymore. Like, what's and, the like, silver I... doing for you on that hand? Well, the silver's uh, at the very least buying me an encampment. Um... Okay, I'd rather trash a card. I mean, that encampment's not going to stay in your deck. That encampment will draw the card that you otherwise would have trashed one time, and then it's gone. Yeah. I, I think Monastery is good. I like it a lot. Getting thin pretty fast is very good here. What's Maybe. the payload of this deck? I, I guess the other idea is to um, open plan remake. If you have a 3-4, you could get a plan and put it on remake yeah. and just trash that one card right away. That might also be pretty good. Yeah, and if you do that, are you buying another remake to get plan to go off again and then trashing remake with remake to get fibers? Mm, depends on my draw, but yeah, that's a possibility. I mean, Archive, by the way, is another really good card at doing at getting the other kind of control we were talking about because that's also taking cards from your deck off to the side and also acts as draw later on. So, I mean, it's the only way to increase your hand size here. Uh, encampment with gold. Oh, I lied. Sorry. Thing. Never yeah. mind. That's OP. So, I mean, what? but as far as what do you think the overall payload of this deck is, what, I'm curious, what's that in your opinion? I know what replace. I think it is. Replace, yeah? Yeah. You want to play as many replaces as possible. There's no plus buy here. The only way to get multiple provinces in a turn is to play a replace, which also, like, is an attack. So, like, the whole the whole deck is just revolving around playing replaces as much as possible. So there's another way to play it, though, which is to get really thin and get golden encampments early and maybe have a replacer, too, but have the plan being to win the encampment plunder pile, uh, win, the, win that split very hard and play as many plunders as you can per turn and win on points that way. Do you think that that has a good chance of keeping up? with the replace strategy. I mean, encampment is really good for playing replaces, so I'm going to want that. Encampments go in the replace deck, right? And now the encampments are gone, and you have this deck that, you know, is playing replaces and uh, drawing cards with encampment and is thin, and, like, now there's only five plunders. So, like, of course those are going to be contested because it's still a good card for that deck. And now, like, what's the point of the deck? The point of the deck is to play Replace. Okay. I don't think you're going to win off Plunder Tokens only. I don't think that can be done. That can almost right. never be done. Okay. Yeah, so on a 4-3, on a uh, I'm pretty sure I'd open Remake and Monastery. On a 5-2, what would I do? Uh, on my 2, I'm definitely getting a Monastery. On my yeah. 5, uh, I'm getting a Remake, yeah. Yep. Yeah, I mean, I would think about Archive or Replace, but I'd probably lean toward the Remake as well. So Simply because Remake is, again, one of the best cards to open with in Dominion. I, I think Replace is a, is a decent card. Like, if Remake Dope. wasn't around, Replace would be an easy call. I really don't like opening with Archive, pretty much ever. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's orange, right? <laughs> like, I know, I know it's orange, but it's so good at getting control for, you know, a, it's a temporary control, but it's so good. It's, at, it's, it's good for getting control in a deck that you don't plan to draw all of. And uh, I want to draw my deck here. I want to draw most of my deck, so I don't think Archive's going to be very good. But, like, even if even if I did plan to not draw all my deck, even if I was building a deck that wanted all of the Archives, I am not opening Archive. Like, it does nothing for it. Like, I'm opening uh, on a 5-2, I'm going to be sad and still not open an Archive. In fact, uh, the game that, that won me the World Championship, <laughs> I, I opened a 3-4 on a board that, like, the whole point of the board was to get archives. Like, you just get as many archives as possible. And then and then you kind of do other stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, both my opponents opened 5-2. They both got archives, and I was like, this is, this is a huge mistake by both of them. I ended up with six archives because they didn't do anything for the next five or six turns because <laughs> they opened archive, right? Okay. I won that game, and I became world champion. So, uh, argument for majority. Are you world champion, Adam? I forget sometimes. Yeah, thanks for reminding oh, me. Oh, gotcha. All right. <laughs> Forgot about that. <laughs> the point I was trying to make yeah. is 
archive yeah. is almost never a good opener. And it's orange. That's a really good hint. Okay. All right. Fair. Uh, <laughs> so what, would you think about... Uh, probably not. I mean, Bandit Camp is kind of a gainer. You could think of it, but it's probably not factoring in. Uh, I mean, on this board, I, I certainly think there are better things you can do because you can thin. Yeah. I mean, I, I guess there are some times I would open Bandit Camp, but I wouldn't be very happy about it. Um, are you seeing trade factor into... Um, trade not, Trade is... Not the turns, but... Trade is really good. Um, uh, trade really trade. needs draw. And... Mm -hmm. so um, are the you draw's not very strong here, so I'm not into it. Okay, but would, does trade kind of hint that archive might be better because it's increasing your hand size for setting up that big trade? Absolutely yes. not. Like, <laughs> <laughs> what, what's that going to get for you? Like, it's going to, instead of, if you open just with a remake, you're just getting rid of the two cards and, oh, yeah. and gaining, no. gaining like, maybe silver, <laughs> like, just like trade would. Only now you don't have to spend a five dollar buy on it every time you want to trash. That's true. Yeah. The trade is wonderful, but like, it's it's not that great here. You need you need to be drawing early to to have trade be super great. So the insight we've gleaned from this is that in the presence of a two dollar trasher, you're always opening remake two dollar trasher. Uh, well, I mean, Monastery is a really, really good card. Yeah. And I want to get thin very fast here. Oh, God. This is about another card that we've talked about. Sweet. Um, okay. I almost don't want to do this one. Oh, it's God. Fine. Like, it's fine. Okay. It's okay. fine. Look at this hot yeah. garbage. Come on. Let's, let's read it. Read it, Jake. Okay. <laughs> so let's, let's read what's in this kingdom. <laughs> For our audio-only listeners, we have gardens. <laughs> oh, God, this is such a mess. <laughs> we have gardens. We have mining village. Quarry. <clears throat> we have rebuild. Goons. University. Masterpiece. Steward. Tunnel. Theatum. In the event, you guessed it, is donate. Again, for our audio only <laughs> listeners, we have Gardens, Mining Village, Quarry, Rebuild, Goons, University, Masterpiece, Steward, Tunnel, Theatum, and Donate. And my brain is already fried just looking at this board. This is actually real. There's a lot going on here. There's a lot going on here, and I would need to think for a second to figure out the most important thing to do first. Rebuild breaks a lot of rules yeah. of Dominion, too. Um, okay. So, so here's what I'm thinking. There's a lot of, a lot of different stuff going on here. Uh, there's Rebuild, and it's hard to ignore Rebuild. Uh, rebuild has Tunnel as support. Uh, so, like, you can play Rebuild Tunnel. The The problem is uh, um, Goons kind of craps all over that deck because the golds just aren't really good if you're getting hit by Goons every turn. So now you're just, you're basically playing Speed Rebuild against a Goons deck, and the Goons deck has some pretty strong support here and can get a lot of points pretty quickly. So I don't really think playing Rebuild is good here. I don't know, though, but Rebuild Tunnel with a Donate has the potential to build a deck that gets a province and mills a province every turn lightning quick. It doesn't get I the think... province every turn when it gets hit by goons. By goons. I don't know. I mean, you could gold flood and... And still not, like... I, I mean, the best you're hoping is to buy a province per turn. I don't, I don't think it's feasible. Like, you can get a goons attack that's reliable every turn, too. I, How I are you doing goons... that? You donate <laughs> when you have a goons in your oh. deck. <laughs> Okay, yeah, I forgot. Yeah, you can't forget about donate, I guess. Yeah, yeah. So I don't. I don't think playing rebuild here is good. 
So, okay. so now there's Masterpiece Fatum, and then there's this Goons deck. But the problem is, Masterpiece Fatum is very good when there is some good draw here, and the draw is pretty weak. It's only Steward, and also Goons craps all over that deck. So what are you opening? Well, it depends on what my objectives are, it, and that requires me to know what deck I'm building. If I was going to play Rebuild or Masterpiece Fatum, uh, trashing is not a priority but then there's also donate which is pretty ridiculous but like it, with donate around i want to open like the payload cards i want to put in my decks so i need to know what my payload is if i've decided i'm playing the goons deck um that means that i need lots of mining villages and stewards so do i want to go for university and then like just get a university and then donate asap so i could open like potion steward Okay, so the Goons deck you, you, that you're talking about is based on playing multiple Goons every turn, but you could make an argument, I think, for a deck that's basically big money and playing uh, Goons as many times as you can get away with. And in that case, you ignore Draw, which means you ignore Steward to free up terminal space for Goons. I think that could be just as powerful... So that deck likes tunnels, Probably. and it likes that, gardens. That deck might even grab a quarry early to get to goons as quickly as possible, and then, you know, with the intention of donating it away. That deck does not contest mining villages and stewards. It doesn't... I, I don't know that that deck needs to, though. Cause like, I think you, it does. I think that building the big money goons deck with donate might be fast enough to get to the point where you're getting a province every turn and playing a goons most turns that you could outpace your opponent's score by ignoring draw. Uh, I, I think the, the goons deck with draw, with draw is better. It's goons, man. I, I think I know, I know it's I goons, think... but like, you want to pl- Okay, goons is factoring in regardless. We're playing goons. Yeah. It's the, how many the more, goons are you shooting to play for? The more I think about it, the more the more I think the the answer to this is get a university in the deck as quickly as possible, then donate. So I'm gonna open potion steward. Uh, if I if I don't see my potion, I'll pick up like a quarry or something, but I'll get the university and I'll donate as soon as possible after that. I'll work up to goons quickly if I see my opponents going for like a rush strategy, like rebuild where I need to play goons as soon as possible. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, I'm going to open Potion Steward here. I'm not positive this is best. I m- would open, I think... I might open Silver Quarry. And get the goons as quickly as possible. And maybe get a second goons. And possibly a mining village before I donate. Because there will be a couple of turns where I play two goons in the big money goons deck that I'm talking about building. But the mining village is really only to play two goons a couple of times throughout the game. And then from then on, I'm just going for money density and playing a goons as many times as I can, as I can and playing, you know, big money. Okay. Well, uh, maybe after this podcast, we can uh, play a game of this. See what happens. Yeah. See how it goes. Okay. All right. Go ahead and read this one. Okay, so in this kingdom, we have Phaedum, Sauna, and that's a split pie with Avanto, Pillage, Replace, Sentry, Herbalist, Masterpiece, Trade Route, Workshop, Cemetery, Lost Arts are, is an event, and as a landmark, we have Aqueduct. Also, um, instead of a copper, you start with the Heirloom Haunted Mirror. So to repeat for our audio-only listeners, the cards in this kingdom are Feodum, Sauna Avanto, Pillage, Replace, Sentry, Herbalist, Masterpiece, Trade Route, Workshop, Cemetery. The event that you can buy is Lost Arts, and the landmark is Aqueduct. Also, instead of one of your coppers, you have the heirloom called Haunted Mirror. So, Adam, how w- would you open here with 3-4? Uh, this is uh, this <clears throat> is 
tough. This is not nearly as cut and dried as the last one. No, it is kind of. I'm not scary. even sure of the the deck that I want to be building here. To be honest, like yeah, you can build a, a higher payload deck using Sana and Avanto, and then you can just like play some treasures and some plus buy cards that are kind of bad, and maybe put replace in there. Um, yeah, I mean, like what? I don't even know. You'd get an herbalist or a trade route, probably herbalist over a trade route. But... You'd probably get them both. It's, really? Yeah, I'm, I'm, the more I think about it, the more that deck has to be good, even though it, it doesn't feel that great. Sana Avanto is going to be a, a pretty hotly contested pile. Yeah. So, and and then there's there's Fadem, and you can do some cool stuff with Fadem too. So, I... so yeah, getting thin is once again the highest priority. But there's multiple ways you can do it. Mm-hmm. Um, there's Sentry. Sentry's probably the best card in terms of quality. If yeah. your goal is to get thin, uh, on a 5-2, I'm going to be happy, and I'm going to open Sentry and probably not get an Herbalist that early. I don't know. It would be tough. Uh, I, I would get it. No, I would get the Herbalist. I would get the Herbalist because uh, having a high action density you... for Haunted Mirror and Cemetery is pretty good to get that ghost. So, yeah, I would get the Herbalist in the opening. On a 4-3, it's a lot oh, tougher. yeah, I forgot about getting a ghost. I forgot about Haunted Mirror. Mm-hmm. So, so oh yeah, on the fight too, you definitely get the century, and you're very happy. Yeah, um, that's that's a no-brainer. You get century in either nothing or herbalist, and you're very happy. Yeah. So on a four-three, there's a couple different routes you can go. You can open sauna silver and just feel bad about your entire life. Sauna silver <laughs> is it's good, but like it's not good most of the time, right? If you can collide the sauna and the silver, you're trashing, and it helps you trash in future hands. But like the sauna doesn't do anything, so unless there's no better option, that's what I like to do. Trade yeah. route's just not a very good card at, at trashing. It's very slow, and it doesn't help you other than trashing one card at a time. So if it was yeah. the only trashing, yeah, I guess I'd go for it, but it's not. And then you can open with a workshop, gain a yeah. cemetery, and trash your hand, and I'm really tempted by that. That's true. I am not as in- enchanted with that, though, because you're relying on getting your workshop with a hand that you are – Wanting to trash enough to put a cemetery in your deck. Yeah. I don't know. I am not as enthused by the workshop. The opener. workshop's a yeah. good card later on, too. It gains you saunas. It, it gains you fatum in the late game. It gains you payload all the way through. I really it, like opening workshop. I'm even thinking about opening double workshop. I don't know. I'm not as enthused with it as you are, but maybe that's a good reason to make this one of our games that we play uh, a few times between now and next episode. Yeah, I'm I'm down for that. Actually, this this one looks interesting. Why don't we Why don't we make this the kingdom? So uh, we'll we'll review this after after we've done with these example games. But like, okay, yeah, I'm down. I'm down for that. Definitely, Uh, I'm. I'm pretty sold on a double workshop opening. All right, and I'm pretty sold on Sun of Silver. So, all right. I know I know it's usually bad, but like the Sun of Vanto pile is so important. And that's why I like double workshop because it gains Sun yeah, too. That's true. It is. Mm. All right, let's see how it goes. All right. Uh well, uh in any case, I I think that's uh I think that's a decent sample of how we would open on a couple of different boards with a variety of stuff going on, yeah? Yeah, no, I mean, this last one has a variety of stuff going on in itself. But, um, yeah, yeah, definitely we've covered a few core concepts at least. Yeah. So uh, let us know what you think about that. Yeah, uh, we'll play it a couple times. Uh, maybe you want to play it. And, uh, you know, let us know what you think. Hop on uh, the forums or comment on the YouTube channel or let us know any way you feel like getting a hold of us. And uh, we hope to see you back for our next episode of Making Luck, a Dominion podcast. Absolutely. Hopefully hopefully there's going to be a lot more of these bad boys. (laughs) I'm sure there will be. And we will hear from you soon. See ya.